So hello and welcome here to Schloss Drachenburg, Drachenburg Castle, on this very beautiful spot close to Bonn at the Drachenfels mountain, uh, at the shore of the river Rhine. And um, yeah, we're here at Schloss Drachenburg. My name is Walburga schulte -Wien. I work here at the Drachenburg Castle. And I would like to show you a little bit more about this beautiful castle and this premise. So this, um, yeah, we start here at this, at one of my favorite places, especially outside, uh, which is the beautiful Venus Terrace. And it's a part of this beautiful uh, landscape park here at this castle. Um, it's not a medieval castle, actually. Um, it's a building from the late 19th century that has been built between 1882 and 1884 for Baron Stefan von Sarter. Um, he was actually um, an, um, an innkeeper's son um, coming from Bonn, so he was not a nobleman by birth. Um, he uh, grow, he was grown up in Cologne and learned there at a private bank, did an apprenticeship and later he went to Paris and became a publisher, a stock exchange publisher. He edited um, a stock exchange um, newspaper and several brochures about big transactions of his time and we think he also bought and sell stocks and therefore he became very wealthy. And um, it was of course his aim then to get a noble title and then later to buy this nice spot here close to his hometown Bonn and then he started building this um, beautiful um, building which has been finished after less than three years. Um, but he did not actually live so much here. His um, place was Paris where he lived. He later became also a French citizen. Um, and when he died in 1902, he was a bachelor, had no family, no children. His nephews and nieces here in, um, um, in the Rhineland in Germany um, inherited the castle and one of his nephews was a lawyer in Bonn. Um, he wanted to open um, the castle for public and so he did that and um, fortunately we have a lot of pictures of that time which helped us later for the, um, the renovation of this castle. The castle has a very changing history because the nephew only had it um, in his possession about eight or ten years. Um, um, afterwards there were some also other private um, owners which used it as a private holiday space or opened it also for public as a site. Uh, as a site. Um, in the beginning of the 1930s we had different schools following each other. At first it was um, a boarding school, a Catholic boarding school for boys. Then within the late 1930s we have the National Socialism regime in Germany and this um, Catholic school had to close its doors and um, a few years later um, a Nazi um, party um, school, um, an Adolf Hitler school, came here to the castle. So uh, within the last days um, of the Second World War, the Allied forces attacked the castle and they destroyed some parts of the western facade. After some renovation works in the late 40s, beginning of the 50s, there was a school again, a railway worker school, which, um, which railway workers learned um, um, something about the theory of, of the things they had, to, uh, they had to do within classes that last a, a few weeks actually. But um, in the 1960s, this school went away and so we had a long period of about 10 years of vacancy. And a lot of parts were destroyed, a lot of vandals came in here and destroyed things. Um, and uh, fortunately, at the beginning of the 1970s, we have uh, another private owner, which is called Mr. Paul Spinat. Spinat is the German word for the vegetable spinach, so we can call him Spin Mr. Spinach, uh, as you like. And, um, and he bought um, the castle from the owner, which was the state of North Rhine Westphalia at that time. And he did some restoration works, but his aim was not exactly to bring back the castle back into the times of the 19th century, of the late 19th century. He wanted to create a kind of fantasy, what he liked um, of that time. And so he had some restoring, some, some, some constructions uh, that has mainly been um, put away now, but we will see within our tour that, um, that some parts uh, really stayed of his time. Um, so he sold the, the castle again back to the state of North Rhine-Westphalia in 1980. 1990 and then it was given from the state to the North Rhine-Westphalian Foundation and a really huge restoration campaign started which lasts until about 2010 
So it was about 16 or 17 years of restoration comparing to only three, two or three years of building. That's a very long and huge time. But the goal was to bring it back into the 19th century. Outside, the park has been also restored, the building, um, uh, the architecture and inside. Um, I told you this is a building of the late 19th century and the time um, which is called in, in art history is called historicism. You have a lot of dedications to former epochs um, of um, architectural epochs especially a lot of medieval parts. You have like the crenellated walls around um, or the big north tower you see. It looks a bit like a medieval castle. But you have also parts that um, reminds you maybe um, of churches, medieval churches, especially Gothic times, the arch point windows. We have, we have a lot of tracery windows. So that's very typical for buildings of that late 19th century and we'll also see later inside. So um, I think we could uh, go now inside and have a look um, inside the rooms and I'll tell you something more about the functions of the rooms of the levels, how a house like this actually worked in the time. Although we must say that Sartre maybe did not use it so much because he did not spend so much time in here. He spent nearly his whole life in Paris. Okay, so please follow me. Okay, so we're here now inside of the castle, the first room you pass when you walk inside through um, the main staircase is the so-called reception room and this whole level you see here um, is dedicated to events, to feasts, so it's a public level called representation level. And you have this wonderful enfilade um, which shows it's so open, you can change uh, from one to another lounge room. And here in this reception room, the owner builder should uh, stand, welcome his guests, drink the first glass of champagne, have the first uh, talks, and then the guests could stroll around here through the different uh, lounge rooms. If you want to separate parts of this whole level, you could do that by uh, using these sliding doors we have, uh, we can find somewhere and in former times we had also curtains that could be let down to separate parts and rooms from each other. Um, if you um, have a look around in this reception room then please have a look at the beautiful ceiling with these um, woodworks here very uh, nicely made. And what is very important for the whole castle, for the decoration of the whole castle, is actually um, a glass paintings, a glass painting, stained glass windows. And we have here five very, very nice pictures, um, five uh, women showing um, um, allegories of the five human senses. We have the sight, we have the hearing, we have touching, smelling, and tasting the last one. Let's go on a bit further, which here is the dining room, which you can see um, it's a very, very dark room with dark woodworks, dark paintings on the wall also. Um, People of that time especially was especially typical for, um, for Germany, for German um, decoration um, of that time. They found it very cozy actually to have, to be in these dark buildings. But you had to have essential uh, lightning at that time also to bring some light into these dark rooms. <clears throat> yeah, you can see this is a small dining room and when you have a look uh, at the walls there are a lot of pictures, a lot of wall paintings with a technique of marouflage. That's uh, canvas paintings that has been stuck onto the wall with glues and they show several uh, scenes of a medieval hunting, so which fits very well to a dining room actually. But you can see, because of, I told you of the changing history of the castle and of the vandals being here in the times of, um, of the vacancy, especially in the 1960s. Um, so we had a lot of destroyment also on the walls and on the wall paintings. And the last private owner, Mr. Spinach, um, who had um, a lot of young painters working for him, they put new canvas 
um, on the walls and repaint it and reconstruct uh, the wall paintings. And you can see here behind me, there's a kind of step structure you can see on the wall. This is a hunting of a deer. You can see the deer um, uh, in, the, in, the, in the river. And this part has been cut out and newly painted by one of, uh, of these young uh, students. And you can compare it with the, um, with the paintings uh, of the original time of the late 19th century. You can see it also by the style, by the painting, because um, originally there were famous uh, um, history painters from the Munich Art, Art Academy working here for Schloss Drachenburg. So please follow me again. We walk on the enfilade. And the next lounge room is, um, yeah, it's a kind of room that was dedicated to gentlemen for smoking. And um, it has been decorated with pictures on a very famous German epic, medieval epic, which is called the Nibelung Song. And this is a really hero story of Siegfried. And um, he came from the Lower Rhine, from Xant, and went up to the Upper Rhine. And he should have come here at the Drachenfels mountain, where legends say um, in former times dragons lived here. And so uh, the legend said that he killed a dragon living here, and he took a bath in the blood of the dragon. And so his skin became invulnerable. But unfortunately, onto his shoulder fell a small leaf, and that was the only spot where the blood of the dragon did not come, and he was vulnerable at that um, spot. And his enemy, Hagen von Tronje, who knew this spot, later killed him at that part. And um, this is shown here, this story uh, of uh, Siegfried and Hagen, Kriemhild and Brunhild, all the um, the protagonists of this story within these paintings. And on the window, you can see the killed dragon. Siegfried should have, have killed here on Drachenfels mountain. And you can also see very dark room. We have the same glass window here, so not, mu not much light is coming up here. So you need um, electrical lights, or in former times, it was gas light. So the next room is actually the biggest one. It's calling Art Gallery, and with all these tracery or windows, it looks a bit like um, a chapel or a small church. Um, but it was a hall for feasts, of walking around, and um, the art, which is shown in this art gallery, you can find um, on the windows. A lot of portraits were shown. Now, parts of them has been already reconstructed, repainted, and we hope within the next four or five years we have we were able to finish all of them. Because fortunately, one of the firms who worked here in the 19th century, um, a Munich art firm still exists, and they have wonderful um, sketches in their archives with a lot of works here for Schloss Drachenburg. And so we have to find some new more funds, some new more donators which help us to, to recreate and to reconstruct these um, windows. I told you um, a lot of portraits were here from people um, from all over the world, or let's say Europe, from the Middle Ages up to the 19th centuries, from all parts of art, but also of society, um, of history. We had a lot of um, famous men and women from painting, uh, painters, um, we have poets, we have musicians, but also engineers, um, discoverers, um, queens and empresses, so um, a lot of really famous people. Thinking of walking around here with guests and having nice topics, of course, to talk about. At the end of this art gallery, this really huge hall. We have a last lounge room, a small tavern room. And the castle here is located in the northern part of the Middle Rhine vineyards. And so this room is dedicated to the enjoyment of wine. And the pictures you see on the walls and on the ceilings uh, represent that. They show um, parts of the living of the antique wine god Bacchus. And here now we have these beautiful stained glass windows in this tavern room. And they represent or combine throughout the, um, the topic of wine 
the two regions or the two countries um, the, the life of Mr. Sata was dedicated to, so his home base here, the Rhinelands, representing these puttos with, um, with Rhine wine and the German Zekt, which is the German sparkling wine, left and right hand side. And then we have um, um, a dedication to, why, to, to the big wine nation France, where he lived, he, he lived in France, with the Cham um, Champagne and the Bordeaux wine. So um, a really nice and wonderful combination of these two parts. And especially thinking of the history of the 19th century, nowadays, fortunately, we have a good friendship between Germany and France, but within the 19th century, it was just a short year, about 10 years after the German-French uh, um, war. So that was very special that in this a person, he loved both Germany and in France, and that's really nice, <laughs> I think. So we're walking down again. I would love to show you some more lounge rooms, and then we walk up to the upper level, which is actually the private level, with two private apartments I would show you. So we walk on left-hand side now to this hunting and billiard room, just for enjoyment, to meet in the morning, maybe for the hunters, and in the evening come back, play billiard, for example, sit in front of this fireplace, smoking, drinking, and uh, yeah, enjoy yourself, actually. The second room beside here is the library. Actually, it's not a scientific library where you have book cupboards, the walls covered with book uh, uh, cupboards. This is only one representative one. It's more or less maybe a kind of public office where people can meet, maybe also talking about contracts or having some business discussions. Maybe this room was, um, was dedicated for. But of course, a house like this, a villa or a castle, needs to have a library. That was very important for Zata, that people think, oh, he has a library, he's well educated. That was very important for him. So we walk up again and you see this marble floor shows us the way back to the main staircase. And um, you can see here inside exactly in the, uh, in the close neighborship to this main staircase, a small wooden one, which was the si side staircase uh, for the staff. That was very important. Maids and butlers and staff, they used different ways to get through the castle than the owner or the noble guests. That was very important. The main staircase, they just used for cleaning very early in the morning. They did not walk up and down, they had their own uh, staircases. This one in the northern part, I will show you later, a spiral staircase, or on the other hand, on the other part of the, of the building, in the southern building, uh, in the southern part. And they go down to the souterrain, which was, of course, um, the level for, um, for the staff with the kitchen, storage rooms, washing rooms, and so on. But we walk up this marble staircase to the second floor. Walking inside this beautiful historical pictures, which show us several occasions of Rhenish history, especially Middle Age history. We have this beautiful picture with the foundation stone of the Cologne Cathedral. And the Cologne Cathedral has been built in the Middle Ages with the stones here from the quarry of the Drachenfels mountain. So we're here now on the second floor, um, which is dedicated to two private apartments. One is the older builder's apartment in the north, and in the south we have a guest on a suite. We will start at the owner builder's apartment. And the first room we want to visit. This is a private um, office, actually. Sata did not stay and spend so much time here as we know. We do not know exactly, but we guess that. But maybe he had other plans. Um, maybe at first he was thinking of um, using this as a kind of 
holiday stay throughout the summer. And I told you, he was a publisher of uh, a stock exchange newspaper. And he wrote several brochures about, about stocks, big transactions. And he was also able to work here while maybe having his holiday here during the summer. The next one is a beautiful small dressing room. So not only ladies, also gentlemen used to have a dressing room. And we have um, this kind of hidden door, very typical also for that time, for the staff, for the maids to come in um, and um, do the works they have to do and do not disturb um, the, the owner builder in his bedroom, which comes next. I think I told you something that um, because of the very early use of this castle um, as a site for with the um, with the second owner builder we had a lot of photographs he um, he um, sold a lot of um, postcard collections to his guests so we have a lot of early pictures um, how the castle looked like but these pictures were mainly from the lounge room from the public rooms not so many pictures, original pictures we have from these private rooms. So this one, this bedroom, we do not have an early picture of, but we had um, early inventories, which says us what kind of pieces of furniture were in here. And we found some very nice interior design magazines of that time of the late 19th century, which helped us to, to um, create this style, to recreate this style of um, a male bedroom of this time. The next room we all see is a small living room. It's called breakfast room, but it was for the use of the whole day actually. And this room is um, quite interesting. Have a look at um, the walls. You see this wallpaper with gold and, and dark red. It looks a bit like a leather tapestry. Um, it has been reconstructed um, after small stripes of the original wallpaper we found behind these covering of the doors. Um, and originally they were a bit like three dimensional, so they really looked like leather, but they has always been made of paper. And now have a look at the ceiling. It looks a bit like a wooden ceiling with wooden inlays, but it's made of stucco. So it's a stucco ceiling painted like wood with stencil painting decorations that look like inlays. And this is um, maybe typical for this building that you have um, a difference in the materials. Um, if you compare the lounge rooms with all the woodworks, with stencil paintings on the wall, handmade stencil paintings, the maroflage paintings, of course, with much more budget um, that uh, Mr. Zarte spent in the public rooms than in these private rooms. They were only for him, for his close relatives and friends, but the representation has to be in, uh, in the lounge rooms. And so you can see it where we are leaving now this apartment, walking to the only public lounge room in this floor, which is the music hall. And you can see it, higher ceilings, and you have the woodworks at the walls. You have here um, uh, stencil paintings, and it looks totally different. Nowadays, it's uh, used for civil weddings, as you might see, because of the chairs and so, with modern uh, furniture. Um, and here's a little monument, a little dedication to the last private owner, I told you, Mr. Spinach, who bought the castle in the beginning of the 1970s. And he has built up this empori with a beautiful organ. And this organ you see uh, here is not a real organ, it's a fake organ. But he was acting, playing this organ. He had a cassette recorder up there hidden with loudspeakers where the music came out. And he, um, with great talent of an actor, he played this fake organ and his audience was sitting here down and then he stopped playing, bowed down to get his applause and sometimes it really happened that in the background the music starts again because he has forgotten to um, switch off uh, the cassette recorder. So now out of this lounge room we have now on the southern part of this floor, 
the guest honor suite, which is an apartment dedicated to guests. It consists of a living room and two bedrooms. Have a look around this living room. It looks totally familiar now, I think, to us because we have this dark wood, we have dark colors, dark red and brownish. So very typical for that time. And now leaving this room, going up to this, and the sun is also coming in here, so it's even brighter, um, with the white lacquer furniture, with, um, with this cloth, with the bright colors on the walls, look totally different, very bright, very feminine actually. Maybe this is the kind of a bit darker German style, and now we have here the, um, the light of Paris coming up that, that Zata maybe want to bring here to, uh, to the Siebengebirge. And um, yeah, it looks like um, a feminine bedroom. We actually do not know so much about the private life. I told you he was a bachelor, he was not married. Um, the, the second owner, which was the nephew of Mr. Zada, he wrote a biography about his uncle. And within this biography, um, he told us about a French noblewoman um, his uncle should have an affair with. We do not know if this lady really exists. We also had an historian doing some research work in Paris, but he only found out things about his economic life, but not about his private life. But we have a very early photograph of this room. And so we know also from descriptions of the 19th century that the room really exactly, nearly exactly looked like this. So um, maybe it was dedicated to a woman of his mind. Um, we do not exactly know, but it really looks like a, a female room. And a very solitary room actually in this castle. I told you when I show you the side staircase of the stuff that we have a second one here in the southern part, which could be seen behind this door. The spiral staircase also for the maids goes down and up all the floors. Through this castle. And our last and second bedroom of this apartment has to be found here, which is a kind of room, maybe thinking of this Paris noble lady staying here. She was not traveling alone. She had a young female travel companion that could also be a young noble lady. And of course there need to be um, a second nearly nice room. Um, and that was this room. And so we tried to decorate it as a young girl's room, actually. Thank you for joining me here uh, throughout the castle. And I hope you enjoyed the tour with me and I would really be happy to see you here in person. Thank you.